So I just finished playing Life is Strange Before the Storm. And overall, I, um, I didn't like it. I really liked the original one, the original Life is Strange a lot more. I'm not sure in the end why they made this title. Like, let me, let me give you all of my thoughts on Before the Storm. And I think I, I'll also give you some of my thoughts on the, pre, like, the game that came before this, the original uh, Life is Strange. I think that the original Life is Strange... It wasn't an exceptional game, but it was unique. I liked I liked the original set of five episodes that the original um, the game had. But the thing is, I, I didn't really like the finale to it, but I liked everything leading up to it. It, it is really like a slice of life kind of uh, game. It's it's like a Telltale game, but the first the first Life is Strange game, it, it was fun. You could rewind time and do a lot of crazy antics. Um, the character interaction wasn't really realistic, though, but I mean, like, you know, it was, it was okay. It was a fun game to, to play through, if you could get it on a bargain, because the games eventually became really cheap. Um, yeah, you could do that. But the final episode was, like, ooh, I, I didn't like the final episode to the original game, because it was just so, like, rushed, everything happened at once. Like, I, I correctly anticipated who the villain was, and you could tell who the A lot of people knew who the villain was going to be. It wasn't really revealed until, um, you know, near the end of the, of the, of the series. But a lot of people guessed it because of, like, some of the lines. I won't spoil anything, though. But, and now I'm going to talk about Before the Storm, though. Like, it's, like... Uh, Before the Storm kind of removes some of the fun features from the original game, like the time travel mechanics, like, you know, like, when you make decisions, you can't really, like, time travel and see it as easily, like, I mean, you can always just make multiple saves and play through this, this game multiple times, but... You know, uh, this game is a prequel, so I feel like a lot of people who don't like pre- I know I don't like prequels, unless the prequel is done very well, I, I don't really like prequels that much, and this game is not really an exception, it's not a, it's not really well made, like, um, I just don't like prequels, because you know what's gonna happen, you know what character is gonna survive and who's not gonna survive, and yeah, in this case, you, you know what's gonna happen if you played, the game, the original Life is Strange, you know what's gonna happen in Before the Storm. I... I don't... But the thing is, I don't like Before the Storm for other reasons as well. Why did they only make it... So what they did with this is they made it, like, cheaper, but they made it only three episodes. But, um... Each episode is... Uh, maybe... It's a tiny bit longer than the episode in the original game would be. Like, the original Life is Strange had really, really short episodes compared to this. I feel like, um, but the thing is, um, I don't know why they did this, like, it's three episodes, and they're pretty spaced out, it seems, um, well, the spacing out of it, it seems like spaced out how the original game was, you might want to wait for all of these, you know, episodes to come out, maybe in a bundle or something, and get them on a good deal, but, yeah, like, like, with the original Life is Strange, um, these episodes, they, they would take about, like, maybe two, three, four months each to, You'd have to wait after one episode to do another episode. It doesn't matter that much, though. I know that there was one cliffhanger in the original series that a lot of people got pissed off about, and they were, you know, people were like uh, begging for the next episode after that one uh, plot event in the original. But before the storm, um, I don't know. A lot of it is very uh, cringy. Like, I just don't think the dialogue is really realistic. No, I do know that. There's so many different lifestyles, uh, socioeconomic statuses, uh, different cultures, ethnicities, all of that. So I, I can't really pretend to understand. Like, I, I guess maybe in like a... I don't want to sound mean and stuff, but maybe in a trailer pro community, like, you know, different people behave differently and stuff. So so maybe, maybe for someone who is in an at-risk population, someone who does a lot of drugs and stuff, maybe they do behave like this, but I, I really don't, you know, I, I don't really think it's realistic, the dialogue, the character interaction, I don't think it's realistic at all, but, but they, they, they do try hard to make it look realistic, they're, they're trying at least, like, it's not like it's bad acting, it's not like it's, it's 100% cringeworthy or 100% unrealistic, I can, I can kind of imagine 
the plot events in before the storm happening to you know someone in real life like it's not like so unrealistic so crazy you know um it's and it tries to be a, a dramatic kind of plot it tries to be like a cute kind of like a slice of life kind of plot it has romance all of that kind of stuff and you know if you're getting into this game you, again you need to know what you're getting yourself into it's like a telltale game it's a little bit different than a telltale game it's more it's even more like narrative and it's less story based um, but with this game, though, yeah, your decisions do matter a little bit, but but I find that the original Life is Strange, you could actually have consequences, like your decisions actually did matter up until the final episode, but in this game, I feel like it's turning more into, to, more into like, a telltale game where your choices just don't matter at all. It really does feel like the illusion of choice. And I, and I saw that a lot since, since they started making, um, you know, 3D RPGs. You, and as as you started getting more cutscenes and stuff, and this game started getting more costly to produce, and as soon as like you had voiced dialogue and stuff, that's when you know developers started making the illusion of choice, where they recycle a lot. Like so, even if you play through the game twice, and you say one thing in your first playthrough, and you say something completely different, it doesn't really change the sequence of plot events that much, honestly. Yeah, there there are a few events that are important and will have permanent consequences, but otherwise it it doesn't really matter that much. My main gripe with Before the Storm is that a lot of the plot is kind of filler. And I know that seems weird to say because this is such a slice of life um kind of a game, a narrative based slice of life kind of game, but the thing is it's just not that much uh, fun. It, it doesn't really have much of a plot. If you try to explain the plot, it's, it is there, but it's just um, awkward, you know? Like, they, they put a lot of the eggs into one basket. And yeah, again, they're just recycling, they're carefully recycling assets from the original game. No, 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 it's not like everything is recycled, but you know, they just recycle the environments. It's not that much new stuff. It's a little bit disappointed because you have, you know, things like the school, the junkyard, um, they're just you know, it's it's just, I wanted to see something new, I want to see something crazy, yeah, yeah, there's a few new environments, but a, a lot of it's recycled, it doesn't feel that much fun, I want to see, like, her do some crazy stuff, like, crazy new plot events, go somewhere wild, um, so yeah, I feel like that was one of my main criticisms with the game, but this game, ah, it kind of removed some of the good things I liked from the old game, sadly. Like, and it's a prequel. If you don't like prequels, I can guarantee you're not going to like this game. This game is, when I talk about it more and more, it has less and less going for it. And then, you know, what's going to happen is a lot of people, especially with these episodic games, like episodic models do kind of work for these narrative games. It sounds weird, but they've kind of made a niche. Like, episodic anything else, like episodic Hitman, th oh, that, that failed almost exclusively because of the episodic nature of that. Because that, 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 that genre wasn't well suited for this, but because narrative-based games, um, most of the publishers who make narrative-based games do do these episodic releases, it's kind of more acceptable. So I don't think that, you know, this game will fail on that basis alone, but you have to remember that that uh, a lot of people are just going to wait for all of the episodes to come out at once. Like, some people do it because it's cheaper, but some people do it because, you know, cliffhangers, they don't want to, you know, uh, like, they just won't end up, like, reading anything about the game. They'll just try to be spoiler-free. And then they'll end up getting the game for cheap. And then, you know, the developers, publishers, they're not going to get that much money in the end from the game. But it's just so weird, though. I mean, what were they trying to do, the developers and publishers? What were they trying to do with this game? Like, it, it almost, it's a prequel, but it almost feels like a spin-off in a way. Um, you know, you have the main character, Chloe, and, you know, she's a, actually a much better protagonist than the previous um, game's protagonist. Uh, she is really interesting. You can actually do a lot of funny shit, pranks, this kind of stuff in the game. The dialogue, yeah, yeah, you know, it is kind of cringeworthy because of, I keep saying it, but you know, you know her stuff, like, um, she has that one famous piece of dialogue, you know, ooh, hella, you know, she keeps saying, oh, it's a hell of a lot of fun, like, and I'm just like, ah, you know, but if you can bear through that, I mean, her character, she does have a character arc, she is kind of likable in her own way, 
the game does have a lot of little details, like collectibles. You don't even have to collect them for the sake of it, but like, you can read a lot of little intricacies. It, the game has its own art style, you know, you can read people's computers, you can read people's files and stuff, and I actually find these files interesting to read, unlike other games. Other games have really boring, um, uh, really boring lore, really boring dialogue in the in the logs and stuff that you read. But this game, I, I like the detail they put into it. Like you can look through like Chloe's uh, chemistry tests from the past. Uh, stuff like that you can and they'll actually like show it like you know they have imitations of Facebook like really good imitations of Facebook and you know social media Twitter that kind of stuff like uh, this game's collectibles the, the, the end game lore and stuff they do do it a, a step above what other people would have done like in other games you just have audio logs and shit you just listen to it this game they actually do put a little bit of work into it and yeah like in the original game if you paid close attention you could figure out who the who the antagonist of the game was from from these entries and stuff but this game like what's it going towards like in the other game, the original Life is Strange, it was kind of acceptable because that game had so many episodes. You still had a lengthy amount of plot in the last half or so of the game, but in this game, um, like I'm, I'm not sure what they're trying to do. It's like they're just going entirely on on the on the Chloe character and and um, like just showing her life and how shitty her life is. And it is true she has a she does have a shitty life. I mean, there's a lot she could have been doing to improve her life, but you know. But but this game, yeah, it, it feels like... And I know it's weird to say, but it feels like so much filler. Even though it's a slice-of-life kind of game, it feels like so much filler. It's it's worth playing eventually, but... But why, like, did these people make this game? Yeah, the, this game has a lot of drama, like, it has a lot of topics that are emotional and stuff like some of the plot points do indeed feel really sad you know oh these issues of drugs violence sexuality all of this like everything is covered a little bit but because everything is covered covered like in such tiny pieces you know it's ah it's it doesn't have it doesn't have much going for it um ah other aspects of the game are interesting like I do like the though I don't like the recycled environments I do like the 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 environment of the world as a whole I do like the lore of the game I, I just wish I had you know like the old game was almost like a murder mystery so if you liked if you liked stuff like Twin Peaks and like these old school murder mysteries in tiny rural um, cities you know you'd like you'd like that game but, but but this game, um, what, what is really going on? And and the thing is, you know what's gonna happen if you play the original series. You you really know what's gonna happen because it's a prequel, man. Like I could understand the first episode having so much filler, but the second episode as well. Like wh what are they doing? I like I like the dialogue system that they have now. Um. Yeah, basically what I was saying in respect to reading stuff around, reading files and stuff, sometimes you can actually unlock new dialogue options. That's a really good thing. And they have kind of like a speech battle system where you, if you listen closely to what the other characters are saying during these intense, uh, these intense conversations, speech battles, you can... If you respond appropriately to what they're saying, you can make rebuttals and you can unlock like... The best solution you can unlock really amazing uh, like uh, results if you do the dialogue options correctly so that's that's another interesting thing about the game other games like deus ex the deus ex reboot what was it called um not mankind divided but the other one uh human uh human revolution was it yeah, that game did dialogue speech battles badly because they actually made it random. So, like, in that game, in Deus Ex, if you ended up doing everything correctly, there was still a random element, so you would still fail the speech battle if you just didn't have good luck. You don't have to worry about that shit in this game. If you actually do listen to the topics the characters are saying and respond to them appropriately, 
yeah, like they're gonna, you know, you can unlock so many cool options and you can get the best solution, but you know, you'll only get one or two, uh, only like a couple or maybe three of them in each episode, and that's about it. Otherwise, damn, the game just doesn't have much going for it. Like if, if 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 you're like really want something to play during a dead time, you know, play this. And maybe if it goes on sale, because these games, they do go on sale eventually, play it for when it's really cheap. But, damn, like, I mean, this game, it feels more, seems like a little bit more forced than the old games. It, it just doesn't feel like the old game. Like, it is interesting, but it doesn't have the originality of, of the old, the original Life is Strange series, like, yeah, I just don't know how to say it. It's like, like a new person making these narrative-based stories, like someone other than Telltale. Back in May, I think it was like 2015 or so when Life is Strange came out. Yeah, it was very low budget and kind of shitty, but, but it had originality, it had the passion. Now it's just like, now this Before the Storm is kind of like a fan service kind of game. Some of the things I do like about the game, but a lot of the things I also don't like about the game, unfortunately. So not really much more I have to say about it. I'm not spoiling anything. I do think that eventually you should play this game. I don't think that you should play this game before the original Life is Strange. Uh, because, you know, uh, some people do like playing prequels that came out later they like playing those before the originally released games i wouldn't recommend it like just play it through the chronological like the, the actual physical release order of the games like that's all i really do have to say about it overall i will say slight disappointment with this before the storm like it's okay. It's it does. It's trying. It's not like they're they're purposely making a half-assed game. It's not half-assed. It's not glitchy or anything stupid. But, but it doesn't have what the original game had. Sadly, so yeah, I would say overall slight disappointment. If you enjoyed watching the content in this video, please consider giving it a like. Also, please consider subscribing to our channel so that you can be the first to receive all of our latest content.